Spotlight is produced and presented by the volunteers at Teleco Village Broadcasting. Good afternoon and welcome to Spotlight on Teleco Village. I'm your host, Elliot Domans. We're fortunate enough to be invited into Rex's home, Rex Marcy and his lovely wife, Kay, and we're delighted to be here. The Marcy home is unique in many different ways, but one of the ways that makes it outstanding is three unique features. Three very unique Marcy motorcycles. And we'll find out about all of those right now. Now, Rex, this particular bike behind us is the bike that you designed in 1973, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Why don't yeah. you tell us more about the very unique features of this particular motorcycle and uh, we'll show the viewers exactly what all that entails. Okay. So, uh, the most unique part of this motorcycle is the frame itself, the portion, the gray part from here to here is the fact that it's a one-piece cast magnesium frame motorcycle. Uh, prior to that, all motorcycles were pretty much tubular frames. And the benefit of, of this type of structure is the fact that it weighs less, you can incorporate the fuel cell into it, the battery and other components keeps them out of the way and makes a safer, lighter motorcycle. The second most unique part of the bike is the fact that the seat runs from almost the steering head to the back of the bike, which gives you more flexibility when you're riding. In this particular case, it's a motocross bike or flat track and ice racing bike. It gives you the ability to, to maneuver, uh, get around much better. The fact that the fuel cell is below the seat gives you a lower center of gravity, which permits you to maneuver even better and uh, it, it results in better handling. Third is the fact that with this type of frame you can build a cradle to hold the engine that you can simply drop the whole engine, transmission and everything with just three bolts. Uh, the reason I designed this bike was the fact that I'd only been racing motorcycles for like two years. And I recognized the fact that motorcycles have a lot of uh, <laughs> appendages, maybe for lack of a better word, but like handlebars stick out, foot pegs stick out, kickstarters, they're just too unsafe. So when you are able to contain all of these components inside uh, makes it a much safer vehicle. Makes it lighter, uh, gives you better handling characteristics. There's just a plethora of different things that make this a better situation. Now when you were racing formula cars, yeah. okay, for Cosworth Ford, uh -huh. I mean you were in an open car, an open formula race car, right? With a roll bar and yeah. cage and everything else. Yes where you had obviously much more protection than you would on this. Yes. But as I understand it, you decided to go to motorcycle design and racing to get yourself in shape? Well, that was the original excuse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, it, it was more appealing. Uh, it was uh, uh, less expensive. Formula cars can wipe you out. I mean, financially, in right. a very quick period of time. So this was a logical transition, and I've enjoyed it now for, what, 40 years, I guess. Now, tell us, Rex, about how many cc's is this engine? Is it a, a one-lunger or a two-lunger? It, it's a, actually, this is one of six engines ever sent to the United States from Germany. Okay. The engine was built by Sachs Corporation. And it's a 250cc engine. And the reason they sent it to me was that I used to race in the 125 class and did pretty well. So they, when they went to the bigger engine, they sent me one knowing that it would go in this bike. 
The other five went to Canada for uh, the Canadian International Six Day Trials Team. Now Rex, with this particular beautiful bike, this, this Marcy bike that you've designed, invented, constructed, and raced, yeah. What kind of a racing, a racing career did this particular motorcycle have with well, you at the helm? <laughs> well, the, the first year uh, was, was like testing and developing. And then when Harley employed me, uh, I took the bike up there. And uh, the first real test was ice racing. And the first year, I never finished worse than fourth, except for the one time I crashed. So it did really well, and the, again, I can't overemphasize the value of the fact that, that it's lower, it's more rigid, lighter, and that really contributes to the bike. Now, if this was in ice racing, okay, with you as, as the ice racer, yes. what would other ice racers be using for their bikes? Obviously not the Marcy, but typically what would go ice racing? Oh, gee. On we the had, Wisconsin lakes. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Mostly uh, we had like a lot of, of what we call flat track or short track bikes, which is like 125, 250, and then the open class, which is like 450 cc's. So uh, that basically is the three different size ranges. And then you had the typical Japanese brands. And then we had, like, at that time, Osa, Montessa, Bultaco, uh, and, of course, my bike. And I think we, uh, there may have been a, a Harley bike out there or two, the, the SX models from Italy. So, but basically, that's it. Now, this is a one-of-a-kind motorcycle, correct? Yeah. There's yes. not another one like it, or it didn't not, go into production? Not in this world. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously, Rex, with you on board this one-of-a-kind Marcy, yes. and with the screwed-in studs, <laughs> and ice racing on some frozen Wisconsin lake, mm -hmm. what was the temperature, and how many heads did you turn? <laughs> well, the bike did turn a lot of heads. Uh, but uh, when you're ice racing, uh, it, it gets so cold that your eyeballs, actually the, the water inside, uh, freeze up a little bit. So uh, you get out and you, and you go into, we had a school bus that we used to, to warm up a little bit before you could touch your eyes. But uh, it turned to quite a few heads. Yeah. Okay. Now, you had told me originally that this being the only one, that there was a period of time when you and the bike were separated. Yes, that's true. Tell us about that. Uh, well, what happened? Uh, I'd uh, taken a job in California uh, to uh, be uh, the sales manager for a, a, moto a moped called Derby's, first, first mopeds introduced into the U.S. And the company that had it also bought the bike and we had a program set up where we would make the bike, less the engine, and then whoever the owner was, they could put in the engine of their choice. Unfortunately, the guy went bankrupt, and since I was a sales manager, uh, I was the head guy. He sold my bike, wouldn't tell me uh, who it was sold to, and it was lost and from 1980 until 2012. And I had a phone call out of the blue Rex, do you know anything about a, a cast frame bike? I says, I sure do. <laughs> and I agreed to, to meet the guy in Indianapolis. I bought it back for $3,000 in a basket, wow. literally. Yeah, and my friend Larry Brinker in California took two years to rebuild it. And it looks today just like it was the day it was finished the first time. So it's like a miracle to me, yeah. So it, it traveled from, originally from Wisconsin or California to Wisconsin, ended up in Indiana? It actually went from Georgia to Wisconsin to California to Illinois, and I picked it up in Indianapolis. I met the guy halfway, 
and brought it home. This one of a kind Marcy yeah. motorcycle. Yes. Yes. What a fabulous history right there. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you you must have been just over the moon when yeah. this telephone call came from a yeah. from a guy out of nowhere in Indiana and said, "Do you know anything about this Marcy motorcycle?" And you said, "Yes, of course I am Marcy. I'm the guy." Yeah, that's right. Wow. Uh, yeah, it was like I I I wondered for years, was it a boat anchor somewhere? Uh, was it in a junk pile? Was it you know, ground up, I, I had no idea. And as, as serious, as like a miracle. You couldn't pray, at least I can't pray for material things, but it was like, I couldn't have prayed for something and have it come so true in a miracle effect as this is. Rex, that's astounding. Obviously, you were meant to be reunited with your one-of-a-kind Marcy motorcycle. That's just incredible. Yes, it is. Now, Rex, this is the second motorcycle behind us, correct? That you yes. formulated and built yes. and designed. Yes. Tell us about the unique features that this bike has. Well, first I'll have to, to uh, refer back to, to Mercer Memories a little bit because in there it tells the fact that I helped start the Buell Motorcycle Company. I didn't become a part of it because Bell Helmets owned me at the period, at that period in time and they discouraged me from leaving Bell to join Eric Buell. They said, he's a hot rodder, he'll never last. He lasted 25 years and made about 25,000 motorcycles. Buell's a big name in motorcycles, and, and Bell is no shrinking violet when it comes to the famous Bell motorcycle racing helmet. So yes. you were in very good company. Yes, I was. I've been fortunate. Uh, I've, been, uh, I've been affiliated with some good companies and some good names and it's helped my career, there's no doubt about that. So what happened, like I say, I, I didn't leave Bell to join Buell, and I, I always felt like I missed out on something. So in the early 90s, I decided, okay, I'm gonna try again. So in, state, in California, you can buy all the components you need for a motorcycle. So I, designed this bike to take advantage of all the accessory companies in California. I, I bought the frame from C&J, they tailored it to the engine, mm -hmm. uh, which at that time was a Husaberg, and then the forks, my friend Eric Buell actually sent these to me. The wheels and brakes were from PM in California, and the bodywork is, is beautiful, and that was crafted by a guy by the name of Rob North. He was a British guy. He built, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, he built almost all of the, the famous uh, world championship bikes. He's a real craftsman, it's pretty obvious. And later on, the engine, the Husaberg, uh, Husaberg went out of business. I was without an engine. <laughs> so a friend at Honda uh, set me up with a CR500 water-cooled engine that uh, uh, was built by a guy named Kel Carruthers, who was world champion two or three times in the 250 class. This engine delivers 70 horsepower. The bike with that much gasoline in it is 210 pounds. That's a three to one weight to power ratio. That is a rocket ship. Now Rex, I understand that this particular bike has a very unusual rear suspension. Tell us, tell us about that. Uh, pulling from my uh, formula car racing experience, I built a rear suspension uh, very much like a formula car in the fact that when the rear wheel comes up, there's an arm that pushes down and rotates off of a pivot point that pushes in on the shock absorber. And the beauty of that is the fact that you're once again lowering the center of gravity, you're leaving more space here for other components which also can be dropped. So it, it is very unique. You said that this is a, a cafe racer. Yes. I'm totally unfamiliar with that jargon, so <laughs> fill me in on that. Okay. And then you also had a racing experience with this, or oh, yeah. 
Or a close call. <laughs> Not a close call. Well, well what happened is a, a cafe racer is a racer with headlights and a horn. <laughs> and that's it. But yeah, we, we took it up to Willow Springs quite a bit. And it's what, what happens is that we had a, an undersear condition. In other words, like turn nine, you go into it at about 135 miles an hour. Wait a minute. 135 miles an hour? You on this? Maybe 136. <laughs> yeah. But you, wow. but, but <laughs> what happens is that it, it understeers, and instead of turning, it just has a tendency to go straight. So you wheel hop your way right into the barriers, the, the, the foam the, barrels? or no, you, you can recover quick enough. You okay. know, so, yeah, but that's pretty much how it went. Yeah. We never did really get all the bugs out of this bike, but it, uh, it was irrelevant anyhow because we never could get a production engine. We went to Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha. No one was able to supply us. So, uh, unfortunately, it became a dead horse. So you had everything else but the but the number of engines, the right kind of numbers of engines to yes. put into it. Yes. Otherwise, it would have been a spectacular production bike. I think so. And you probably Absolutely. would have gone faster than 135 <laughs> miles an hour around turn nine at Willow okay. Springs. Yeah. We'd have put a bigger engine in for sure. <laughs> Rex, do you ever ride this bike now? No, we don't. Uh, it, it's uh, it's too difficult to start. It takes like a boy on the bike and three giant guys pushing it. The compression is so strong on this thing. Just in case you get the wrong idea about Rex, that he's not multifaceted, look at these catalogs. They all say Marcy on the cover. These are exclusive Marcy inventive designs for tank bags, for clothing for motorcycles, all specifically designed by the man right here. Now Rex, here we are in front of no less than motorcycle number three, Marcy motorcycle number three. Yes. Tell us about this one. Well, this, this is actually a Buell uh, 2008 model and my good friend Larry Brinker in California who's uh, the retired manager of Nissan Design uh, helped me redo this bike. We had the concept of, of building this bike and making accessories to be sold in the aftermarket. Uh, what we did basically is we took 40 pounds off the bike and we added 12 horsepower. And we improved the, the appearance of the bike considerably the fairing used to be this wide and protruded out a good foot. We took all of the fairing off and created this little mini fairing. And instead of having the lights side by side, we, we mounted them up and below and gave us a much more narrow profile. The addition of these air and scoops, one on each side, added six horsepower to the engine. We added six horsepower by installing a new exhaust system, not to mention it enhanced the sound considerably. What looks like a fuel tank is not a fuel tank. Actually, the frame is a fuel tank. And if you'll remember from bike number one, this is the same concept that I did 40 years earlier. If you'll notice, we've added wider handlebars uh, simply because it gives you better maneuverability, similar to what you would experience with a motocross bike or something of that nature. Now this looks like it's very rider friendly. It looks like you could get on the seat, you could tuck your knees up, you know, underneath the, what I would call the supercharger of this particular bike, and make it into a classic touring road bike. Actually, this bike is one of the most pleasurable sport bikes you could ever get on. Uh, the seating position is perfect. The handlebars are elevated so that you're not bent over as much as you are on some sport bikes. And uh, with the wider handlebars, it gives you better maneuverability as I'd mentioned before. You didn't go into production on this bike, but why didn't you develop the accessory line for this particular motorcycle? Curses, I was foiled again. 
Uh, Harley Davidson owned the majority of Buell motorcycles. They were in financial straits, I guess, and they closed down the Buell operation. We felt that if we developed the accessories, they wouldn't sell that well, uh, simply because the bikes weren't being produced anymore. My special guest today has been Rex Marcy, author, designer, engineer, motorcycle fabricator, the only guy I've ever met that has three motorcycles, not in his garage, in his home. For Spotlight on Teleco Village, I'm Elliot Domans. We want to thank Rex and Kay Marcy for having us in their home. We're a production of Channel 3, the new Teleco Village Broadcasting. Okay. <laughs> no, Elliot, give but me still a, a but still a one of a kind. <laughs> 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 <laughs>